What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Grammar Field Podcast. My name is Jack, otherwise known as MLB Nerds on Instagram, and I'm here with my co-host, Ryan, and my other co-host, kind of, he's not technically a co-host, but he's kind of been a co-host, James. Uh, today's podcast, we're going to be going over our war draft that we started at the beginning of the year. I know I'm winning like all of them. Uh, and we're going to be going over the questions you guys sent in. We do this pretty much every week at this point, just because I kind of think we, we kind of enjoy it. And I think you might, guys might enjoy asking us questions or whatever. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, my apologies. My lighting is pretty weird today, just from what I can tell, but it's whatever. Uh, and yeah, with all that said, let's just get into the, the war draft. Let's just go over the war draft. Uh, James has that stuff, I'm pretty sure. As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be a home run. He's a quitter. He's lazy. He doesn't want to, you know, whatever. But So I'm not 100% sure because Ryan's telling me they're wrong, but at least we'll check the overall one. Overall, uh, I can check right now, actually. Let me, let me so, just test what's sold up. Um. In our overall war draft, is it not updated? It's not update. Soto's of 0.4, and he's at a 0.5 right now. Okay, well. So it's, it's not updated. When when did he update this? I don't know. It has to have been recent because Soto had a, didn't have a great series. Well, the well, let's see. It was – okay, well, I can just put in dates, uh, custom date range. Just start, like, whenever the season started, and then – Oh, we'll same go. with Riz – Rizzo goes up 0.1. It's it's not much. It has to have been super recent. Yeah, I think it. I think it was literally yesterday. It ha- no, not yesterday because the Yankee the uh oh actually yeah I think it is. Hold on, I think it was yesterday. Was it a big game yesterday. Mm, uh, okay, so he has. So if we go to the eighth, which is not yesterday, it's the day before. But if he updated it yesterday, that's what it would say. Uh, I would just check with like Trout at 2.5. Uh, oh, you can't get Trout. Acuna is at two point two. No one drafted Bryant because I don't know. I do we draft Bryant? Oh shit! <laughs> well, be, no one drafted Bryant because he's not a top four third baseman. What did yeah. you draft Suarez? What? Did it's Ramirez. Suarez? Someone has Ramirez, Chapman, Rendon, and Oh Bregman. shit! This is the overall one. I was t- I was thinking about the NL Central. In, oh, in the NL Central, Who, I have Bryant. What overall. Oh. What? None of us drafted Ryder. We didn't draft him in the NL Central draft. That we're all dumb. I, I took him after you yeah, guys because, didn't because I don't I didn't I, for that draft. You know, so, no. We're still we're still there's no I have no idea how Burns how like oh, okay whatever how I, I just don't understand how somebody drafted Cabrian Hayes and no one took Chris Bryant but because Jack no that was actually dumb but I drafted Sony Gray well, over Cole. Hayes I would have a higher war if he wasn't injured. So. No, he that's wasn't. Not, Brian's third in the league in war. Not, that's not even close to true. Okay, J.D. Martinez has 1.7. This has, this is older than a day. Yeah, yeah so it's because... literally it's literally yesterday. He no, updated because... it yesterday with stats up to to Saturday. It's no. it's updated up to Saturday. Okay. No. No, because the uh the oh um Sony Grace is zero point five. Oh well, I'm his name is name. Sonny. Whatever. Zero point zero. You like, I feel like you go out of your way to try to mispronounce. No, it. I don't. I just this is how I would. This dude played for the Yankees. Uh, and he wasn't he good. Still don't know his so. name. I feel like I might just be really good at pronouncing names because I I could almost besides um Marcus yeah. Simeon, Simeon, I just Simeon. say Simeon instead of Simeon. Well, okay, but that's. The one I can't pronounce is uh, we, uh, I guess that's not a pronunciation thing. That's just that we don't know his name. Is Luis Robert Robert whatever? Yeah, but no one knows how to pronounce it, right? Yeah. So. It's not like right. Ryan, Ryan uh, this Ryan this is updated Ryan. up to oh, Arenado. Yeah, this is updated up to um to the eighth to May eighth. Well, so we're which good. Which one? The divisions or the overall? Everything. They're no, all the because same. that's not true because Sony a great pitch on the fifth and his ER and his war coming into that start was zero and after it's 0.4 and it's still zero. So I don't think the divisions have been they touched for uh, at least a little bit. Well, they we gotta, should, we gotta, it, sh- it, sh- it should be like, it complete. should be, but it's not. Okay. Well, you know, whatever. We'll just go over the overall, overall one then. And then I'll ask Jackson about that later. Uh, so in our overall, Jack is in last place with 9.9 war. Wait, why? I'm right there. Am I, wait, because what? Garrett Cole and Ronald Acuna are carrying you. Ozuna has zero. Tatis sucks. Chapman sucks. Goldschmidt sucks. Grandal yeah, sucks. Bad. Tatis? Uh, is this Robert bad? Robert being gone hurts you because he was killing it. He was hitting the ball well. And he's Wait, I had Robert? Defense. Yeah, and he's yeah. hurt. Fuck. You also had Carrasco. Oh, 
That sucks. And then and Carrasco got like, set back. You're you're getting you're getting carried by a couple of racists and Ronald Acuna. So Who are racists, Josh Hader and who else? Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole and, raced it. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. You no, it's actually team. hilarious that you you banked on Lucas Giolito for your fantasy team or not for this war draft team, and it's the one year he's actually turned back into uh you I, know, I, I mean team Giolito. Giolito sucks. What the fuck? Right, I'm been, sorry, I just saw this year. But I just want to really say right I just got Ryan. All right, so Ryan is in is in second to last. He's in, in third third. because he I mean his team's been pretty consistently average. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my pitching's been carrying me. I'm confident I would have been better if I didn't get five. My pitching is ass, but my uh, all right, whatever. In third place, no in second, in second place, either. we have Jackson because Freddie Freeman sucks and Cody Ballinger's hurt. That's pretty much it. How are and you in I, first place? I'm in first place because my entire team is good. Wait, but I, I actually want to check the legitimacy of this. I need to do okay. Remuto, yeah, okay, that makes sense. You you pick like three guys who are broken out to start the year. And Harper's well, been great. And I mean, I, I told you Bogarts Armstrong. would be good. and no one Yeah, we all know that. Well, I, I was stupid enough to pick Lindor, and he's the worst one here. So, Well, Lindor will, like, Lindor will end Lindor up better sucks. than no, – he'll, he'll end up better than Cause, Tatis. Cause, cause, no, because Lindor sucks. I don't know why I picked up. I don't, know why I I don't understand. Up, okay, we're, we'll get into that later because those are some of the questions that we did have. But, um, yeah, so I guess we can just get into questions. I have them pulled up on my phone in a minute. And then we'll just go from there. So we'll start with the ones that we recorded last week. We didn't record last week. So uh, I guess this is a good one. Uh, Will the Dodgers or should the Dodgers make a move with their injuries and who should it be? A bullpen piece, probably. I think bullpen. I think it's too early. Like they'll they'll be fine. Yeah, probably. But I still think they'll need they'll probably you always need some sort of pitching depth at some point during the season. And I think they could benefit from a if they if they have a good bullpen, the rotation's so good, the lineup is so good. The only reason they've been struggling is because of the bullpen. And I think obviously they're gonna fi- figure it out. They're well, no, they're, 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 their their offense has been pretty bad lately. So. Yeah, but do you think it's like I, I think the bullpen struggles can be a real problem. I don't think the lineup struggles will be a real problem because bullpens are really fluky. So I mean, the reliever reliever uh, performance is really uh, turbulent, not uh, or more turbulent than offensive production. So they, they they'll probably grab a reliever at the deadline, maybe a bench bat, something like that. I don't think they're gonna go crazy. Or if they are, I I think they probably. I, I honestly, if I was them, I would definitely go after a bullpen arm because their bullpen to me is a weakness. I wasn't particularly high on it to begin with, but they lost Knebel. I don't know how Canley's going to look coming back. If he's back in September, I'm not even sure if he is. We don't know if Knebel's going to look coming back from whatever major injury he had. And the rotation is really good, but at the end of the day, you really do need a solid bullpen in the playoffs. I mean, the Nationals were some of an exception, but, uh, you know, I think you, I personally think, do, especially if you also lost want one. I think, I mean, they could. I mean, you first of all, the Dodgers can do whatever the fuck they want. Like, they'll just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, I don't. I really think they probably should. I definitely think they should. You know, I I, I, I we, think they should definitely go for a bullpen arm. With the we Dodgers, definitely agree that like, that's all right, the so Pirates and Richard Rodriguez. Oh, okay, I was we've, say we've all, we've all said Richard this Rodriguez. a hundred times. Yeah. With the Dodgers, I think the thing you can say about them is they're going to get a ton of innings from their starting pitchers. So you don't need like a super deep bullpen. I just think you need like that really well, I mean, also but we've locked seen down them, guy their starters their starters have not been as good as we thought they would be this year i mean just the rotation other than, whole, especially Bauer's been other than not Bauer Bauer and bueller have been great uh kershaw's, kershaw's been, been a bit shaky insane. and Bauer has not been as good the last couple of kershaw's starts. like third in the so, league in war wait time on. bauer has been shaky i'm sorry kershaw has been pretty good bauer's been shaky the last couple of bauer starts. has not been of, shaky either no and bauer's still giving him six innings he's still giving him six innings like five innings and four innings from like that against the what what no he went what are you six, talking four, about and eight he went six four and eight bro oh no i'm talking about the last two starts six and four. okay six innings and the four innings that's fine that's fine okay, who are that who are the dodgers in their bullpen they're, i'm not saying they, they, don't they, need they a bullpen. still have gonzalez they I'm still have jansen this. they have good pitchers in their bullpen but besides gonzalez and jansen at the moment like I mean, who else they have? Like fucking. That's Garrett a fair Ford point, and I agree. I think they need a reliever. I'm not saying they should get another starter. I'm saying they should get another bullpen arm. 
I, I agree. Oh, yeah, they definitely don't need to start. Because okay. you don't need to replace May, but you'll get Gonsolin back whenever he's healthy. Both of David fucking Price, who's like, I don't know what he's doing. He's injured. He's I mean, hurt he's, not, he, he's hurt, Dude. and he's not very good anymore. So Yeah, I guess. So I guess the Dodgers relievers right now that have thrown a bulk of their innings are Trinan, well, who's, who's, who's very good. He's really good. Uh, Jansen's been terrible. Uh, actually, that's not true. Jansen has awful peripherals, but a good ERA. Um, they have Scott Alexander throwing a bunch of innings, and he's been pretty solid. They have Victor Gonzalez, who's been great. Uh, and Jimmy Nelson has really good peripherals, too, I think. I think the issue here is with the Dodgers is that we've seen the most in the playoffs. Like last playoffs, they play, I think they, they went in both elimination games in the NLCS or the, the final games of that series, they went with an opener or a bullpen game. They like they need they need arms because they lean on that heavily. Okay, yeah, but that's before they had Bauer. But even with Gons Gon- Gonsolin, they did that multiple times. Like have they? They it's good to have those options, and they're very effective when they use these bullpen games because they have Urias and Gonzalez, who are amazing guys. If you want to bring them up, Gonzalez, whatever you do this but on purpose, I swear. I don't. I just don't. I legitimately don't know how to pronounce their names. Um, but when you have such an effective strategy, like if because they, I think they've mastered the opener because they have the best, the best possible. Uh, pitching depth in my opinion to do so when their bullpen is right or at least last year they did if they can continue to build a strong if they have that strong bullpen uh, there's literally no way to beat them because uh, pitching wise because you knock their starter out early they can just switch to an to an opener game plan like this they did it with Gonsolin so I, did I pronounce it wrong there or did I get it right no you got it no I just think the thing with the Dodgers is like they they're def and I guess isn't definition, but the way that you would define a bullpen game isn't exactly what the Dodgers are doing with a bullpen game or with uh, with an opener, especially because they're having a guy throw, go out there, throw four innings, five innings, like Gonsolin or what they were using May or well, Gonsolin wasn't. Gonsolin was basically an opener because he sucked. He was getting playoffs, he, was, yeah. he would get like blown up in a start, and then they'd have to pull him. Yeah. And not out that because he actually sucks. I'm just saying, like the the fact that they were able to do that and save their butt in multiple games got them to the World Series. Because if they didn't do that, they would have lost that NLC. They need a reliever if they're going to have these situations and not have that bill uh, of a reliever or a good bullpen. Dave Roberts is kind of an idiot. I think they're gonna they're, they'll fall short of the expectations without a good bullpen. I I. I still think that as currently constructed, they'll win the World Series without a reliever. Yeah, I mean, I think they would, but like... Oh, I agree. I don't know if they're too much of a guarantee. They're not perfect. I would, I would think they're really, by far, still the favorites, but like, there's really no reason for them not to go get in their bullpen arm, you know? Right. I mean, like, yeah, what's but... What's happening? You've got... Okay, so mm-hmm. Knable's obviously going to be out for a while. You still got Trinan. You got Nelson, who's been good. Scott Alexander's been good. Gonzalez is good. Jansen is good. Joe Kelly's back. Uh, they still have Bruce Gratterall. Like what? Uh, I said Joe Kelly's like great though. He's 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 very. Over- I think the whole Correa thing overrated him massively. People think he's a valid asset to a team. He's injury prone and he's not that good. I mean, I don't think he's like bad though. He's just a solid. You know, he's bad. He's just meh. Meh. Yeah, he's not great, not but great. it'll give you it'll give you some innings at like. I guess he was pretty he's terrible. He's Luis Sesso with clout. That's oh, yeah, he's he also he's more Luis fun Sesso than him. with clout. All right. Is he more uh, fun or he's just more of an idiot? I'd say more fun. Both. I'll give him both. All right, let's move more on fun and more an idiot. All right, so let's move on to stuff that isn't as old. All right. Um, injuries aside, Byron Buxton is a top five. No, top three outfielder in the league. No. No. What? No, but like top No, 10. not even discussion. It's not a discussion. I'm trying to think. Maybe. Of how, I'm trying uh, to think where you'd rank him in with outfielders because. Like in outfield- terms of like raw tools, he's probably like you got obviously. Betts, okay, so you got Trout, Trout, Trout Betts, Betts, Acuna, Betts, Soto. Or Acuna, Soto, and then Springer. So those top seven. 
And then I think you'd probably like in terms of Bucks and Caesar. Did you say Yelich or Bellinger? Oh, I forgot those two. So those two, and you could probably slide Bucks in and Yelich. I mean Judge. I said Judge. He said Judge. Judge. Judge Okay. I don't know. He thinks he's the third best player in baseball. Of course, he's going to say him. You could probably slide Bucks in there at ten. In terms of ceiling, (sighs) actually, ceiling's probably. I think Gallo is better than him. No, I don't well, think as Gallo far as ceiling, ceiling goes, I, I feel like you could really I feel like black. you could make you an argument that Buxton has, has a higher ceiling black. than anyone else there, except for like Trout or Bad. I think Buxton is fucking. Oh, okay, Hurricane. ceiling is different. Well, tell me, ceiling. I can say Luis Robert has a better ceiling than Byron Buxton, pretty no, easily. No, very easily. It's better. No, he has, what? No. He, has, he hits yes. the ball just as hard as him. He has no. much better play discipline. His play is significantly better. His he gets. He can get on base. He he's, he could he, he walk the fact that he walks at a league average clip at around eight percent is way better than Buxton. That's Buxton has lost like once this significant. year. Buxton has yeah, a play discipline not, of hobby bias. Do you think Robert is just going to be or Robert or whatever? I'm sorry. Do you think he'll just be as good you, as hitter as Buxton? He has he had a one thirty six WRC plus this year before he got hurt. I know, but do you think this games. year? Yeah, again, that's like like twenty games. games. Buxton's Whoa, obviously ten games. Pretty, Okay, pretty, like 20, 30. Pretty small sales like for bucks. You're two, saying right? ceiling, though, right? Yeah, I guess I if you're going to say, like, ceiling as far as – I mean, as far as that goes, I'd say Robert has a higher ceiling just because he's so much younger. Yeah, he's – dude, he's he's a 60-grade prospect, and in, in, in his last full AAA season, he put up a 136 WRC. Piece. He was killing the baseball. Yeah, but – that for so, not a full season. Defending. But um, – In AAA? Oh, in AAA, who cares? No, I was just talking. No, I'm saying, like, in terms of his offensive tools, his op- offensive tools are amazing. We know he's an amazing defender. We know he's also a great base runner. Like, I think he's just as good in terms of ceiling as Buxton. I think it's fair to say their ceilings are right about the same. I wouldn't say it's not. I would say it's not fair. It would be unfair to Robert to say that his ceiling isn't the ceiling of Buxton as well. Okay, sh- fine, but I think. Ranking players off of ceilings is dumb, anyways. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm just saying. He said talking about tools and ceilings, and I'll say Robert has to be in that discussion. Who else right. is in that discussion? If we're talking about ceilings, whatever. Uh, Do you think Adelise Garcia will keep his strong start going? Oh. No, because he's 28. I don't like his play discipline. Oh my god, his play discipline's I like terrible. I like he wants the Yankees to get Patrick Corbin. Like why? <laughs> Okay, uh, okay. I, I, I don't know. Back. I like it. Get the get the political diversity. Oh no, he wants to straight Stanton for basically. All right, can, can can we stop? Uh next question, let's go. Garcia, um, he's been great. He hits the ball super hard though. Um like he does, but he just doesn't play this play. Maybe he could be solid. I think he'll be a solid player. He's just like he's not gonna be as good as he's been. All right. He RBI. has to show me he's not a Kenio from last year or two years ago. I guess. RBI is a you clutch stat. Are we just? Yeah, 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 yeah. No. RBI is a clutch stat. Is it yes a and not. Or a question? No. No, it's a statement. It's a it's take. It's not. It's not. No, it's, it's not. Sad. You can literally, you are can stat that RBI so heavily. Like it's not, yeah, it's not really. I think, I, I think saying that RBIs are not a clutch stat, like completely, like it's, it's a little bit because, to, like, if you're coming through with, runners in scoring position but there's so many better ways to quantify that like there's wait you can split any other stat with runners in scoring position like you could just look at somebody's wrc plus with runners in scoring position and that would tell you more in high leverage or yeah like leverage leverage. index yeah so i I just don't wpa leveraging well no no not for i mean actually you You need wpa right uh try is the goat by the end of his career no i don't know i don't think he'll ever be better than bonds no, he's well, cleaner than Bonds. Yeah. Well, maybe it depends on how long he plays. Well, he's better Bonds than Lee Mays. Or, no, he's even better than Bonds. I could see him getting to top three. Maybe I, even I guess top putting him there with Bonds. like what? It depends Who's, on how much you care about Era. Like I, I don't know. Is he? Is he even? Okay. Is Bonds even better than Babe Ruth? Yes. Yeah. If I okay, I have a weird. I have a, I, I've kind of become one of these people. I don't think Babe Ruth could hit today. I think he would suck. Like a yeah, lot. I feel like, like I think Tyler Glass would make him look like that. Feel, yeah, okay, but everyone would. Everyone would. Right. Like I, I legitimately but I think, if think you, if you took Babe Ruth, you gave him like 
17, 18 years of modern training like they did now, like they do now, then I think he could. Like, but the thing is, like, I'll say this, like, I think Ted Williams, if you, I think Ted Williams is a better hitter than Babe Ruth because I think Ted Williams could translate his skill set better than Babe Ruth could. Significantly. Well, he also, he also played uh, 40 I years later. I think so. Ted Williams would be better than Babe Ruth. Okay. And he uh, also had still... some of the best play discipline you've ever seen. But anyways, uh, I don't think Trump would be the boat. Yeah. Are you oh, still confident in your opinions about the A's? Actually, let's talk about the A's. Because the A's are, I think the A's are going to fall off. But like, I don't know. They're, they're, they're really, winning. They're, really, they're like... Yeah. Cole Irvin's been very good. But very, like, very good. The Lizardo... He hurt himself. He's yeah, playing. playing fucking video games. What a quitter. You shouldn't be on the team. He has no grit, Look, but... Another one. Ramon Laureano's having a great year. Yeah. That's not going to continue. Yes, it is. He's been good for years. Seymour doesn't I... stop winning. When Seymour, Seymour's not going to stop winning. Okay. Ramon Laureano has been good for his entire career, and Jack just continues to underrate him. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't think the A's will win the division, but I do think they have a playoff chance, though I don't think I'll pick them to make – actually, do I? Will I? No. no let's yeah, go. No. Let's fucking go. Who what? cares? He went deep. Who's he? Stallings. I that care. was a while ago. Who cares? I just got the note. I just saw it on a home runs MLB. So. All right. Anyways. Well, anyways. I'm just telling you, I'm a big part. Uh, the question um, was Anyways. Uh, okay. So, like, with the A's, their offense is not going to be – you know, they don't have, like, the superstars that – you know, they have Matt Chapman, superstar. who who's a superstar. But, like, they don't have – uh, you know, any huge names, I guess you could say, but they're going to produce, especially well, like, Olsen I don't, and Loriano and Canna. I don't, around too, I don't, I still don't really see them as, you know, a night. What are they on pace for right now? Like a 95 win. Oh, they're on pace for. Yeah, but that's not the, I don't think that's the question. Like, let's see. They're on pace. Um, I think. I think they'll make a very good push for the playoffs. Right. Very, very, very good push. But yeah, I just I, think that I the Blue think, Jays in Boston will beat them out. I still think that's the Astros division to lose. Yeah. And I still think the Angels are better than them. I don't. I, I don't believe in the Angels. They, they, uh, they, I, I do they because their rotation is – uh, their 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 rotation is like 28th in ERA, 29th in ERA minus, and like and – like, fifth in like sierra and strikeouts and walks and like their, their peripherals are great uh as a, as an entire pitching staff and their results are awful and i think that'll turn around although their defense is terrible so that's part of it but which doesn't make any sense either because they have solid defenders pretty much everywhere um but yeah their defense has been awful anyways uh, about the A's, they're on a 95 win pace. I'm still confident that they're not going to make the playoffs, but I would not be surprised if they do. Yeah, I agree. I and Ramon Laureano is pretty good, and I like oh, that because I like being right. I just don't um, think they'll beat Toronto or Boston. But they Jack and Ryan, how does it feel to be – the third, uh, a fan of the third best team in New York after, really ju- after June first. The season's going so far. Um, after June, oh, oh, Toronto. I'm actually really happy about how the season's gone so far because the biggest issue is the offense, and with the biggest issue being the offense, that's really good. The pitching has been top tier. It's been probably except Jamison. Except Jamison Tyon, he's pretty terrible. The pitching's probably been the best. Time out, time out, time out. Jamison Tyon, hot take. Jamison Tyon, Jamison Tyon is gonna have the best second half you'll ever see. He's gonna go on a Jake Arrieta run, and he's gonna win the side. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. He's probably gonna be. I, I think Jamison Tyon, if he like, if he, he's just an average or like maybe like Look a three, at that very average five point zero two ERA. I think he'd be like an amazing bullpen weapon, like a Julio Reyes. That's what the ERA. Like, yeah. You only finish with point or whatever. Right, my point, I think I have a pretty good point. I think it'll be a great. I think it could be a Julio Urias in the playoffs, and I think he'd be really successful in that role. His 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 pitch mix plays really like he, he doesn't throw as hard as Chad Green does, but he just reminds him of a knockoff Chad that. Green in that sense, where he has a fa- okay. uh, tail the fastball slider combo. He doesn't throw as hard as Chad Green. Okay, but I think assuming that. that 
he'll be even able to be. Um, well, first of all, assuming that the Yankees make it out of the wild card game. Second of all, that right. uh, they have four other starters who you trust more than him to start a playoff game. Which could I mean, happen. Yeah, but then then you're trusting Montgomery, right? Or Herman. No, it's pretty it's simple. Cole I'm Severino, just it's Cole Severino, uh, yeah. Kluber, and then, and then what? what? I, think I, I think Kluber's good. I, I definitely I, I think Kluber's good. And then, and then that, four, that fourth guy has to be Tyon unless you trade for someone. I, I agree, but I'm just I'm, I'm just I'm assuming if the Yankees do trade for someone, I think that he could be that type of beast. I'm not saying that he is going to have to be or he has to resort to that. I'm just saying I like what Tyone can be in terms of his flexibility in that sense. If the Yankees need, if the Yankees go out and get another starter, which I don't know if they will do. Yeah, they should just go out and trade for like. Uh, I mean, I don't even know who's going to be the starters on the market. Sure, on the sure. trade market. Actually, I, everybody keeps saying Scherzer. I know he's going to be available. Yeah, everyone's. All right. Are, are you sure Scherzer is? I don't think Scherzer. No, is. I don't think so. I think everybody keeps right. mentioning yes. that name. I doubt it happens. So. All right, will Trevor Bauer be a top 10 pitcher by the end of the year? Yes. I'm going to answer this yes. with one word. Ah, move on. He Next already question. is, first of all. And Next yes, question. he will. Next that's question. not one word. Next. Well, question. I was going to say yes, and that's, then he told me that's, that's more than one word. Next question. Next question. Next question. All right, Next. talk about how awful Scott Kingery is. Scott Kingery is fucking awful. He's not a major league talent. I don't know what happened to him. He's, he's terrible. terrible. No, he's, he's actually terrible. Really if you look bad. at his numbers, he's, he's atrocious. He's just straight up terrible. He, he, okay. He's so bad. What's your take on the Dodgers slump right now? Uh, we kind of already went yeah, over that. Yeah, we already went over that. All right. Here's one. Let's talk about this. Are the Braves just not good or are they underperforming? Well, underperforming. let me tell you about that, hot. actually. Let me tell you about that. The Braves are just not good. You know, the Braves, they're, uh, they're an okay – they're a pretty solid team, actually. Um, their best pitcher is probably Wesker. Wesker. I'm sorry, I actually don't want to say that name. Wesker. You know Wesker. You know what? He's probably their best pitcher at this point. Um, I'm actually really sold on him, just relative to the rest of the guys they got. Morton's. I mean, I don't know if Max Reed. No, I would probably say he you knows better. I'd actually probably say that. Not confidently, but I'd say they're like the same tier of pitcher. But Charlie anyway, Morton fell off. Morton's washed. I wonder, you know, who said he'd be a fucking top seven pitcher. I think I think, I think Charlie Morton's issue is that he he went from two of the best organizations in the league as far as like dealing with pitchers goes in the Astros and the Rays mm-hmm. to the Braves who are pretty mediocre. They're not great. And they're so like, yeah, they're, they're I think I think Charlie Morton is pretty washed. Although his stuff isn't much worse I don't think. I don't know what's going on with him. He's just kind of Yeah, I mean I just think that um I mean, I've been saying this for a long time that the Braves are not that good. And um, I'm glad to be right about that. I think if the Braves want to contend for that NL East. Okay, actually, I think we're I think we're overreacting with Morton. Maybe you're overreacting with Morton. Because Morton, Morton, Morton's peripherals are fine. Okay, but if we're – let's just say if the Braves really want to contend legitimately for the NL East, they really need some more bullpen help. They got Shane Green back, but he's not great or anything like that. He's not going to – He's solid. Him. He's good enough. He's good. Well, I mean, I don't know. The Mets are going to be – if, if, if DeGrom can't stay healthy, the Mets are screwed. So All I want to say, though, is can, can I just say this? For all the Braves fans who were arrogant and arrogant. flat out insulted, insulted by the idea that they weren't the best team in the NL East because we were one game away from the World That's Series. The best part we're about the mighty team. Braves. Look at the lone Mets. The, 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 lot, the tiny, insignificant Mets who have made two World Series within the last time the Braves have won a World Series and have won two World Series games in that 20-year stretch. Last time the Braves have went to a World the last time the Braves won a World Series game was in 1996, and they lost eight straight because they got reverse swept after that because the Yankees won four straight, three at their place, and the Yankees went over and kicked their ass for another four straight. Yeah. So the lowly Atlanta Braves who haven't won a title since what, 1994? 1994. So you have to have been 26 Five, right? and a half. No, 94, 95 of those. There was a, the no, 94 was the lockout. Oh, you're right, 95. My bad. So 20, you'd have to be 25, 26 to have been alive for and probably in your 30s to have remembered it. The Atlanta Braves have not been made the World Series since then. The Atlanta Braves have made the NLCS once in my entire lifetime and have blew a 3 one lead in the world in that NLCS. The, fire me the up. The Atlanta Braves, who have yet, have yet to 
capitalize on the fact that they have one of the best players in baseball and one of the best contracts in baseball. The Atlanta Braves, who have yet to impress me, quite frankly, all season. The Atlanta Braves, who made fun of every other team in the division as lowly, insignificant. Every team in the division has gone to World Series before they have. And all teams in the division, except for the Mets, have won a World Series in that time span. Think of how embarrassing that is. You're the now the Marlins Atlanta are Braves. better than you. The Marlins? That's that's depressing. If the Marlins have won two times since they, I, I I would I would I would. That's embarrassing. The They're 20, an embarrassing 21, franchise. The twenty twenty one Marlins are better than the Braves. I cannot and, and wait the, my victory lap. Like, like I don't. I'm not a victory lap. Like a victory run or walk. Like, like on their graves. You know. I wouldn't like piss on their graves if they weren't arrogant. Okay, it's 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 way too early for this. I'm just I saying I wouldn't be this passionate like, about my this is, for them if this this is a team that is 17 and 17. They're a 500 team with no production from any or not or, okay, no production from Ozuna or Freeman. Uh, minimal. I mean, Darno went down so. I guess mental production from him. And then like I think they'll get going at some point. Right. I but I don't look know. anything and, other than winning the division would be grounds for me to make fun of them. That's in my opinion, because they're an arrogant fan base. It's like the they're like Yankee or Dodger fans with or White Sox or Red Sox fans. fans without any of the success. Any of it. None of the success. None of the success. All of the credibility, all, or credibility, all of the, well, they are the Atlanta Braves. How can you pick against them? Look at baseball prospectus being the nerds that they, they pick against the mighty Braves, the powerful Braves, the storied, successful, amazing organization that has yet to make a World Series in my lifetime and have won an LCS. That's, that's all. That's, I just hate their You know, uh, the Yankees on, have... I've been dragging this on, but again, fuck the Braves. Okay. Uh, why are the Yankees so streaky? They're streaky... You know, they're not per se streaky. They've been streaky so far. But a lot of your, your the, the streakiness or what the, the what it appears to be streakiness is like the Yankees live and die by the home run, which is probably the best way to go about building a their offense. They weren't any more. I disagree run. with that. We How else are you supposed to score? Right? Merchant or person. Whatever. What? How else are you supposed I, to score? I mean, like if you look at the best offenses in the league, they homer a lot, but they also shoot the gaps a lot. And like, like who? I actually – for the past I wanted to make a point about this. Lot? Yes. There's a timeout, but that's an that's hitting the ball hard. It's about hitting, it's about creating. Well, I'm not saying don't hit the ball. I'm not saying don't hit the ball hard. I'm just saying like living and dying by the home run is but very I, I is don't very think volatile. Any offense is built like that. The idea that like <laughs> I, I think it's fundamentally wrong to think that any offense is built on the home run. They're built on barreling the baseball. You barrel, you want, when you're growing up there, there's two successful outcomes. You walk or you barrel a baseball. That's the two successful outcomes. And you risk more strikeouts, which it happens. And it sucks. It's not great, I guess. You know, strikeouts, they're the considered the worst possible at bat. But I'll say this. I'd rather have nine John Carlos Stantons and nine DJ Lanes because I'd rather John Carlos Stanton strike out with one guy on and bases loaded than hit a ground ball right to the shortstop, which is yeah. how the ground ball to shortstop. Okay, nine, nine. No, uh, I mean like offense, not defense. Nine you know Jack Cole Stanton's well, Stanton's in the field player. would be hilarious. It would be on the field. It would, it would be like it would be crazy because what what Stan's home run per at bat rate? It's it's like is it like, like isn't it like the best? So he's hitting spot? in theory he's hitting three ish home runs a game. When he's hot, could be four, but that's like every single game. All that's right, crazy. so Stanton in his career. Now we're not gonna go career. We'll go as a Yankee. As a Yankee. Uh, and it, it, and remember, this is in a little league park. Um, oh, at bats don't show on the dashboard here. That's dumb. Um, I should use plate appearance instead because, we want yeah, to all right, ho- all right, fine. Home run per plate appearance. Uh, or we'll do, ho- we'll do plate appearances per home run. Um, is about one home run every 19 plate appearances. And assuming he gets twenty, they get twenty. And so, if you're talking about three homers a game, you're wrong. Yeah, that because would... there's no way that he's getting fifty-seven plate appearances in a game. Well, no, I mean, you probably get home run for plate appearance rate again. Nineteen. Oh, so that would be probably like what two? 
too. As a Yankee, if, right? And that's if you're getting on base 11 times in a game and not getting in any double plays. Which could happen if he hits the ball hard, right? The, the, the thing with Stanton that makes him so broken is he hits the ball so hard, especially this year. He, I think he has he's on the ground a lot, six. though. Yeah, but he's been elevating it more now. And the thing is, because he hits the ball he's so also hard, he's also overperforming. 381 expected on base average and a 401 at Wilbur. Oh, my God. Over it's it's, it's 390. Really I really think he's going to regress a lot and he's going to suck. He regresses he's to, to a 140 as a plus. No, he'll be but fine. Anyways, besides the sarcasm, he hits the ball so hard. Like it's not even like it's not even like a Stanton judge. It's just a Stanton thing. This is just Stanton. Like I, I love Judge, but Judge is not Stanton in terms of how hard he can hit the ball. Stanton hits the ball so hard, unless you're right there, you're not catching it. Like you, can, it's physically impossible to get to a ball he hits normally. On average, it's 98 miles per hour off the bat. It's insane. It's this guy's insane to watch. He'll, hit a, he'll literally hit a ball like five feet off the ground all the way to like the center field wall. It's fucking nuts. This dude's unreal. I love Stan so much. He's unreal. Stan's average exit velocity this year is 99 miles per hour. <laughs> it's not even 90. It's 99. It's not. He's Stan. unreal. It's, it's 98.6. Stan's my favorite player of all time. He's been my, if you had not, he's definitely my favorite player of all the, uh, player, favorite player of all time. He's probably one of my favorite players when he's on the Marlins. I was at the game where he hit his 50th home run in 2017 in Miami. And I've always been a big fan. Stan, Stan has not had a single season since 2015 that his maximum exit velocity was under 120 miles per hour. He's fucking insane. He's, he's I so actually good. think I actually think that if we say like pure talent, he's the best hitter on the Yankees. And I and I, and I think I can comfortably say he's probably a top pure five talent. Baseball we're going on okay, pure, pure talent. He's, he's a top five hitter in the entire league. He's probably a top three hitter. I mean, Jordan. I mean, you have what? Three. Trout, Soto, yeah, Jordan. Trout, Jordan uh, Soto, Trout, Soto, Trout, Soto, Jordan. You could say J.D. Martinez. Nelson Cruz. But Nelson Cruz, Cruz maybe Nelson Cruz. I think, I think him and Cruz are kind of just there. Like, well, the, the, we the don't difference still. between Cruz is Cruz tends to not hit the ball as hard as Stanton, but tends to get better. He results. also plays way more. And, and so so that's why we ranking him. Made a glass and play the outfield. Dude, I mean, well, if, Stan, if, Stan, if, Stan, the play, if Stan played the outfield, he'd be a top 10 player in the league. Like, if he did that... He was a top 10 player in the league before. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, if he played the outfield and stayed healthy, which he did in 2017 and won the MVP. So... Man. And what's nuts, too? Dude, he's at 40.4 at 4 at 31. Like, I thought it was, like, 33 with, like, a 30... Maybe yeah, but I mean... He could he's, legitimately he's, go he's, to the Hall of Fame. He's gonna get a yeah, he's a 40.4 at 4 at... at 41 or th- at 31 but at he 31. was a but he was a 38.9 at 28 so well he's a lot of injuries that's the problem injuries really well yeah, but okay, how, let's are, we say gonna, from how age are we gonna 31? reliably say that he won't get hurt this year or next not, year not, all he has to do is what and i'm just Wait. saying like also first of all you gotta consider he was healthy in 2018 he was healthy in 2017 not healthy in 19 not healthy in 20 again 20 was a very small season so who knows he could have come back and been totally fine you He's know, gonna play out his entire contract. We know that. He's not gonna retire for his contract. I don't know what's so funny about that. What? You? I thought you were laughing. Sorry. No, I'm yawning. Whatever. Tired. <laughs> okay. I would I laugh when, at you just because of that. We could just say like, okay, 2019, obviously a wash year. He was injured for the majority of it. 2020, he was injured for like what a month? About that. Uh, 2018. Yeah. 20, 2020. I'm sorry. 2020, he missed got- 37 games out of 60. Okay, so he was injured for a So let's million. let's let's be really smart here and pro and prorate injuries. He's got yeah. Okay. Anyways, just think about like, he was on pace to miss hundred. And he's gotta basically get well, we... why would you prorate <laughs> no, I'm not... that's, that's why I said that. That's why I said that. No, I am basically <laughs> okay. saying, like, all he has injuries. To do... All he has to do to get to a sixty F four. Right. No, you said something 100 what? I was I'm joking. Saying, I'm he's no, he was prorating injury which is dumb. He I'm was joking. He, he was played, joking. You're making a He point. was joking. No, I'm 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 trying to say like he could have for all we know played 120 games last year. Right. If there was a 162 game season. So to say Stan is super like, I think we exaggerate Stan's injuries. Clearly, they're, they're an issue and they've been an issue for almost the entirety of his career with a lot of them being kind of freak accidents. He played 41 um, games in 2 years. But okay, yeah, so but how many years a 60 game season and the other year was obviously like you know that was an injury issue, but people, you know, well, and then he also missed what, uh, I guess even when he was younger, like 
In 2013, he missed 50 games. And then he in missed 20... time because he got a That's fine, ball, but he's he playing was... 110. Yeah, okay, yeah. Playing 110 games, like Stanton will be a Hall of Famer easily, but... I, I'm just saying, I, I'm just saying, look, think of it like this. That 2019 that we mentioned as a wash year, literally everyone responsible for that injury got fired the second that season ended. So everyone responsible for whatever happened yeah, and to Stanton okay, is sure, not in fine. the organization. And you but can't then, say the injuries are the same because the Yankees have been supremely healthy compared to everyone else in baseball. They've they kept healthy. all of their starters. They've kept everyone Sorry, in the bullpen year. except for O'Day and Britain. Yes. Uh, I'll say to Voight. Voight, Urshel has been hurt. Urshel hasn't hit the IL. Has any of them hit the IL? Other than Voight. Who hit the IL? Oh, I mean, like position players? Yes. Well, no one yet, but it's also May 10th. I'll take it, really. But like, compared to everyone else, there's injuries across yeah, the, the Cubs, league. Yeah, the Cubs injuries are killing me. But to talk about, like... Dude, talk, like, May 10th? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm going to... I'm talking about, like... Okay, but no, by May first, 10th in 2019, their entire team was already on the AL. Yeah, I know I'm what you're going to reference. Say. I was referencing... Well, I'm actually kind of... I'm not glad Andy Har got hurt because you hate to see players get hurt, but we never would have discovered Gio Rochelle, probably. Either way, what I'm saying is... You can't really be MLB expert here and, and predict injuries like that. You know, you can make an educated guess in terms of, you know, how a player, MLB expert, MLB expert who predicted Nick Senzel tears ACL in the All Star game. All right, do you guys want to hear the Yankee lineup on eight on May 10, 2000? Because it's pretty fun. Yeah, and then I want to All hear right. it, and then I want to hear the one where Eric Kratz was starting last year. All right, so Lemayhew Voigt. Lemayhew wasn't supposed to play at first because we all thought Troy Tulo. I don't know what game, idiot right? in the organization thought. Tra- he did it. It's it was so dumb. But anyway, Lemayhu well, didn't start uh, opening day, right? Oh, Troy Tulowitzki started. <laughs> Lemayhu, Luke Voigt. No, the Yankees thought Troy Tulowitzki would be better than him. Unironic. Unserious organization. Anyways, unreal. Uh, Lemayhu, Voigt, Sanchez was hitting third. Frazier was hitting fourth. Talkman was hitting fifth. Torres was hitting sixth, and Duar was hitting seventh. Urshela, before he was a god, was hitting eight. Was hitting excuse me seventh. Uh, maybe was hitting eighth, and Gardner was hitting ninth. Maybe can what a maybe, lineup, man. This line, and, no, pull up the lineup. Maybe was good for the Cubs last year. Tyler Wade, Eric Kratz was starting in the same game. Oh, oh, really oh, let's pull. Let's go to the let's let's pull out a deep bag of the Yankees lineup. All right, all right, oh I get your point. Twenty twenty three. Um, over under two point five MVPs for Rushman. No, under. under. I'm hitting the under. under. How the fuck are you supposed he's to catch him? All right, so unless he's like... But think MVPs for a 21-year-old is really dumb. But also he's a catcher, so I'm not going to give him more than two. Also a catcher. He's a good. He's a really good defender, but like he's also a catcher. So I just can't project him to be like... I, I, can't, I don't think it's responsible for me to sit here and ex- expect um, him to be like the next uh, Johnny Bench. He's a Hall of Famer, but I'm not going to predict, predict him to be Johnny Bench. Did you say he's gonna be a Hall of Famer? He's I said I can predict. I responsible, and he can be, but I'm not gonna predict him to be the greatest catcher to ever play because that's what he would be if he won three MVPs. Probably the greatest catcher well, we've depends. ever seen. Because no, like you can win, be the greatest catcher ever seen. You can win or three MVPs the and then peak. fall off immediately. At least the greatest peak. But let's say he's like an eight at least the greatest peak we've ever seen. Let's say let's say in terms of MVP, he's an eight win season because like that's sort of what the the benchmark eight nine we'll, we'll call it eight. So, so that's a that's a quick twenty four wins in three seasons right there, and that's three was, seasons that eventually like I don't know he could fucking DH the rest of his career he'd probably get to I don't know it depends on how good of a hitter he is. Unless so here's what you'd have to predict in order for him to win three MVPs: A, he's a Hall of Fame catcher by far; B, he's Johnny Bench; or C, he's Sandy Koufax is the catching position, which is extremely all well the Hall of Fame one not as unlikely. But you know the the, the Johnny Bench from Koufax in your career is extremely so unlikely and so hard to predict, I'm going to bet the under. All right. How about those Cardinals? They're a good baseball team. They're not great. I think they're very fraudulent. I think they're going to start to fall off fraudulent. very soon. They're I'm actually okay. excited for that. It's going to be a lot of fun for me. They're going to fall off. Their team is not good. Nolan Arenado is not as good as he actually has been playing recently. Fultz was going to heat up. I don't think that guy who said he's going to have a 99 WRC plus and 15% walk rate, is, walk rate is right, which is really funny that that happened. But um, I think Goldschmidt start to heat up. I think Arnold start to cool down. I think the bullpen is, and the fucking rotation is outperforming everything. Um, 
there's really no reason for them to be this, for them to be this good. And I'm excited for them to fall off, actually. I'm actually thoroughly excited for them to fall off, which is not something I'm particularly like. I'm not actually excited for the White Sox to fall off, even though it's going to happen. I'm just, they won't. They're you know what's funny? I'm extremely but... excited for the Cardinals to fall off. I'm They're like, starting actually, pitching so good. The White Sox starting pitching is amazing. All right, all right. Back, to, back to the Cardinals. Cardinals. Um, I think their pitching is a little bit fraudulent. I think their offense is fine. Like, Carlson's good. Uh, Edmund's good. That's amazing. Arenado's good. Goldschmidt's good. Molina is going to fall off at some point, but it's really their, it's really their pitching that worries me because outside of Flaherty, like no one there I can consistently say is reliable except for they, Wainwright. They need to call up the Giants and ask for as many starting pitchers as freaking possible because the Giants are pumping out good starting pitching like left and right. They, like Aaron Sanchez, the IL, they bring back Quaid. I know he struggled, but he was coming into that sort of like a one eight zero ERA. Like they can pump, like they've been pumping out guys from free agency, just throwing him in the rotation, and they've been dominating. So if you need starting pitching and the Giants are out of it, you got like that's a team you can trade for with and get a bunch of at least starters that are okay and decent can fill in your rotation. The Cardinals should be. I don't, calling them up. I don't think the Giants will ever be out of it this year. That might also happen. Like they might legitimately never come out of the playoff race. I still think the Giants are going to end up closer to five hundred, but they're still. Good. But they okay, but I think they'll at that point. But I think they'll end up. I don't. I don't think they'll make the playoffs. Like I'm not. I'm not ready to say that they're going to end up better than the Braves or the Brewers or anyone like that. Cardinals or even the Cardinals. No, I think. Who are you talking about? Talking, none of the Giants. Giants. Oh no, I think the Giants are better than the Cardinals. Like I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here and say that the Giants are going to be better than the Cardinals or they're going to be better than the Braves. But I do think that they will be close enough as a trade deadline that they don't move anyone. All right. All right. What other questions we got? All right. We talked about this last time, and I guess we can start to like change the, the change the dialogue here. Um, what about Francisco Lindor? Who's the best shortstop in baseball? That's also the question. But why don't we start with talking just about Lindor because he's getting hot now after a really relax, shitty start to the year. I'm relax here. It's been like four games. So yeah, but like he's... we said, he wouldn't be like a 50 WRC plus hitter. Around exactly. 115. Well, like we said and didn't post because I didn't record that episode. Nice fucking oh, job, man. dude. You know what? If you guys are listening now, we recorded a podcast episode last time. We didn't record it. The record button. We we record we dialogued we, it. We we said everything. We, we ran a practice section. A lot of the shit we're talking about now, and I feel like we're just like repeating ourselves because you know I'm done. Because we are recording, we are, but like you know whatever. I I now I'm seeing Johnny Sins on my Snapchat feed. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> He's good. So, 115 WRC plus hitter, probably. Around so, Lindor, since he broke the 04 streak, the 0 for whatever, 20, whatever it was, really is uh, is slugging 714, has a 228 WRC plus, obviously always elite defense. Um, he's got uh, – that's not right. He's got eight hard hit balls, which is 57% of the time. He has an, an average exit velocity of 94 miles per hour. He has three barrels. Uh, he's he's hitting the ball hard, and he and he's had even when he's been complete shit this year, he's walked more than he struck out. He has elite play discipline. He has a very low BABIP right now, so I think Lindor will be fine. He's getting going now. You know, all he had to do was punch the shit out of Jeff McNeil, apparently. Hmm. And it's a rat cool. And he's better than uh, better than Fernando Tatis. Uh, no, he's not. He hasn't been better than him this year. The last time Fernando Tatis Jr. was worse than Lindor, he was in AAA, bro. That's the last time he was worse than Just stop. <laughs> Tatis also, is literally worse than Bogarts. Just Tema, can we just say this about Lindor at least? At least we can say comfortably he's maybe as good as Andrelton Simmons. Maybe. Maybe he's as good as him. Jack, are you ready I, to call I, him as good as Andrelton Simmons? Maybe. 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 Say I think we can comfortably so say he's still the best shortstop in baseball. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's not the best. Really he's not that. even better than Trevor Story. He's not better than Trevor Story. He's, be- he's, he's better than Story. No, he's not. He hasn't been from 2018 to 2020. Story's better than him in every war category, every most day. offensive category. From 2018 to 2020, that's not true. 
Twenty two. Yes, I have a spreadsheet in front of me with the numbers. All Fuck. right, well let's let's okay. open the numbers. Let's go. We have from Hold twenty eight on. from twenty eighteen to twenty twenty. Lindor led story in WAR. Led. No, uh, no, 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 no. That's not one hundred percent true. One hundred percent true. I literally share my screen right now. If it is, it's not per one fifty. I said it to it, per six fifty. Excuse me. Okay, well that's dumb. Why is it dumb? Because one of them plays every day and one doesn't. So that's that's not the plate appearances matter. That definitely matters. Yeah, and more plate appearances, appearances is better. Because if you play on a better team, like when you play with Cleveland, you get more plate appearances because your offense is better. So you're coming up every single time. Okay, Store yeah. doesn't have that luxury. So how's that fair? They literally is, played the same amount of games. They played the same amount of they games. They played the same amount of games. I would assume that Story Maybe. has less starts. And no, I would assume what happens. No, what I would assume happened is Cleveland that he doesn't. Cleveland sucked. 2018 to 2020, Cleveland They sucked, sucked in 2020, but 2019. But he led off. Story doesn't lead off. So that's not fair to him. When Dorgan lead, lead off. In 2020? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Not, we played not, in the, not for most of his career. We, yes. Well, in 2020, he did. We played him. He led off. In 2020, he hit third for three Unless months he, and led off for Three weeks. Look for in what month? All right, all right. Let's let's do this. But point is, I all right, we're we're looking at it right now. Right here's twenty twenty. Here's three weeks of leading off, and here's three months of hitting third. Okay, you said three. Okay, well he's still getting more plate appearances like that. Like the story does not lead off ever. Okay, th- right, so well, let's check that. I don't think story's ever lost. Yeah, I, I think he's led off the game maybe once. In his entire career. Well, I mean, he sh- he also shouldn't lead off. But okay, twenty. He's had ninety-seven plate appearances leading off, and four of them were in twenty sixteen. Lindor so, had ninety, had a hundred and fourteen. Okay, but he hit second the entire year, except for That's, the last week of the season. So okay, but that was in okay batting second. That was only in twenty twenty. The year before, only two seventeen plate appearances, and the year before that, only uh, uh excuse me, in twenty and, and the year before 18? that, he was leading off for most of the no, in last twenty eighteen. In 2019, okay. he's hitting first and second, except he hit no, cleanup. No, 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 cleanup from I, I, d- dude, look, literally look at this. Look at look at the zoom. I, I have it pulled up. Okay, wait. Let me pull it up for you. Ready? Because I can I, show you what is what is batting. I, I, I already have it pulled up. No, because I have the I have the uh, batting the exact number. Oh, you have of the number. Appearances. Okay, yeah. I just have so a game. So 2020, log. he's never let off, or 2021, or in 2018, only 2019 for 105 plate appearances. Batting second in 2021, he's done it in 28 plate appearances, which is only six games. 2020, he did it for 270 plate appearances, the majority. 2019, 441, and 2018, he didn't hit second once. So in 2018, he hasn't hit in the top two ever at any point in the season. Now he hits third four times in 2018, 14 times in 2019, 20 times in 2020, and he spends most of his 2021 plate appearances batting third. Now batting fourth is where he gets the rest of his plate appearances, or right. most of them. Or fifth. Story and bat- fifth yeah, so a lot in 2018. Fifth. But that's so, my point. He literally doesn't – and he hit six that times. He hit six that times. Okay, well, that Eight was because he was a rookie. Months. Like No, in 2018? In 2018, he was a stud. Well, why the hell Bro, was he like, – Oh, he, he hit seventh like twice at the beginning of the year. That doesn't – that doesn't – and, that, and that, was, like, that And that was coming off of what? his 2016 – or no, or coming off of his 2017 season. They sucked. Well, so that's that my fair. point. He still hit seventh. He still hit fourth and fifth way more than Lindor did. He never well, hit yeah, in the Well, yeah, because Lindor point. is better, so he hit No, higher, because like. he hit behind Blackman and Arenado, and they valued those two heavily. Okay, and it's Lindor, not, not, Lindor was – and Dor was in a lineup with Santana and Ramirez, so it's not like it's that. And much Santana's different. not Santana's not as good as Aaron Hubble is. Well, Blackman sucks, so. But Blackman was also is like a is like a standard stat merchant, and the Rockies are not smart, so they're batting him ahead of him consistently. He was leading off a lot of games. I know, so. I know, I get that. So, so even that's my point. The play even, appearances even, are because he gets hurt. It's because he didn't get he doesn't hit in the spot right. of the lineup that would get him the play appearances. So and, and he never will because he'll go to the Yankees and they'll strike out every time. So all right, but my point is per six fifty story is better than Lindor per six fifty in every war category. Not even close. It's not. It's actually not close. Okay, in all war he leads by a whole win per six fifty. Um, is it really that much? Because it's only like an eighty yes. point appearance in F war, not in R war, not in R war, but F war. Yeah, not in F war. Well, I guess that's because Lindor is base running. Like Story's a really good base runner, which is something exactly. And he's a better hitter too, according to WRC Plus. He's a better hitter this year as well. 
I okay, mean, well, well, okay, everyone's a better hitter than Lindor this year. That, but, uh, my, although, that, although Lind, Lindor is also severely underperforming, so. Okay, and he's done it for how long? He's, he's only performed for a pretty significant amount of time, Lindor. Three, he's, three, underperformed, three, he's underperformed for 400 plate appearances. No, his ex was like 352 when his weight, his regular weight on base is, is sub, is, what is it? Can you pull it up from 2018, 2020? Well, it won't do this. I have no to... 2018. No, not actual, but I have his actual, but I mean his regular, but 2018. Oh, 333. No, 2018 to 2020, not 2020. Oh, because that's uh, 354. 352. Okay, never mind. He doesn't underperform it. But Who's point standing? is, oh, that's Jack. Okay. Lindor, um... Lindor is not better in DRS, and DRS is a better defensive metric than ZR per 150, but he's, he destroys. He Story destroys in, uh, Story in uh, as above average. Yeah, he destroys again, everyone DRS, in as above average. But that's and, and that's fair. But I'm just saying he also destroys him in DRS. So the defense is at least somewhat compare. It's somewhat comparable. No somewhat one des- comparable. no one destroys each other in DRS. Yes, fourteen point one per one fifty games played versus seven point seven is absolute destruction. Uh, wait. Well, hold on. That's absolute destruction. Lindor and Story. Okay, so Story does have the DRS, and then and Lindor then has the a, other two. Lindor destroys so- him in the other two. But he's so much better as a base runner, and he's a right. better offensive player. And the defense is comparable enough that it's not nearly the gap that there is. Base well, I mean, I he's wouldn't even hit. say so it's that. It's not. Player. It's not that big of a difference offensively, other than the it's base three running. points. But he's still a. It's it's three points. He's still three points is, yeah, is like still almost negligible. And then, but Lindor's, it's still right, right, right. And Lindor is so much better defensively. No. DRS I mean, this... is literally DRS is better than UZR because it's a video scout. DRS is one of the best, is my my opinion, the best defensive metric because it's a video scout grade. I think video scout grades are better than prop than out probability grade, in my opinion. Okay, but that's that's subjective. Like you could make an argument either way there, okay. and you can make a strong argument either way there. Is what I'm saying. But so, that's fine. I mean, you have a difference between what 48 outs above average and yeah, 17. And that's... And I just want to say most of the offensive and defensive skewing is because Story's OAA was bad in 2018 and Lindor was a way better than he usually is in 2018 offensive. He's usually not a 138 WRC plus hitter, and Story is around a 120 WRC plus hitter. Right. So I'm Story L- the edge. Lindor did overperforming, or I, I, he didn't overperform in 2018. No, he, just, he had an outlier in 2018. Not an outlier, it's just a career year. I mean, I'd call it an outlier. And call it a career year. I wouldn't say it's an outlier. But I mean, if, I feel like an outlier could be a career year. Well, yeah, that's fair. But Story's a 120 WRC plus hitter without 2018 and a much better defender without 2018. Like, this the isn't like a Zach gets... Cozart outlier year. This is a... Right. That's why I wouldn't call it an outlier. We just call it career. I mean, I, uh, okay, yeah, you could call it a career year, but like, I I don't... Actually, I would be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if Lindor has another 2016-17 like year. It would be 18. That's fine. Be crazy so but story does that 2015 2016 which he hasn't done a while with ease like story did that in 2019 story was on pace to do that in 2020 story does that in his sleep story's on pace to do it i think this year what what lindor did in 2017 no but what he did what is it a 5.71 season story has done it in 2019 was close to in 2018 would would have done it in 2020 he does it in his sleep man he's that much he's, he's he's unreal Okay, so he's done it once. And Lindor's done it. He was on pace to do it again, but three times. 2020 cut it short. Well, I mean, okay, Lind- fine. Lindor's done it four times if you're going to go with pace because. No, he wasn't on pace to be a five win player. Yeah, he was in 15. But that's 15, like, yeah. That's, that's a generation ago. That's, that's and 2016 was the story was on pace to do it. I'm not going to bring that up, though. Yeah, okay. So then Lindor still has more. I mean, he's, he's played an extra year. So that story's on pace for him. nearly five wins already, and he and he got off. Isn't story start. also a year older? Yeah, I mean that doesn't really matter, but I'm just saying. I think we have to. Yeah, I have to wrap up. I also, I also have to, I also have to. Go yeah, so I think we have to wrap this up. But yeah. uh, either way, um, we're still gonna disagree about this. Yeah, because, we will. That's cool. Because I, I mean, I, I see the argument for, uh, for story. The Tatis one is a little shaky because I still think Bogarts is better than him, but but that's fine. Um, He's better than Lindor, so. <laughs> Anyways, let's wrap it up. So Jack, Jack this up? Yeah. yeah. All right. That'll do it for today's episode of the Drive Off Field Podcast. If you like what you saw, please give us a five-star rating. Whatever platform you're listening to, make sure to drop a like on YouTube if you're listening on YouTube. Uh, make sure to 
follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Deep Rev Pod. Always feel free to DM us your questions or whatever you want to talk about or tweet us at Deep Rev Pod, like I already said. Uh, make sure you always look out for those question boxes. We're going to put them up pretty much weekly and answer them because it's just fun to do. Uh, it's been a Deep Rev Love Field by Castellanos, and we'll see you in episode 96. Thank you.